Sure. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the online class sessions conducted by ASAP, Additional Skill Acquisition Program, Department of Higher Education, Government of Kerala. As you all might be aware, this is a session for the eighth semester mechanical engineering students. For all those who are logging in for the first time, let me just brief you with the online class schedule that we are following. This is going to be a one hour session with each half consisting of a 20 minute lecture followed by a 10 minute question answer section. You can post your doubts or queries in the Q&A option that is available in your screen. Do post your doubts and queries in the question answer Q&A section. Today, we have with us a very eminent faculty, Dr. Jobin Burgis, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Adi Shankara Institute of Engineering and Technology. Dr. Jobin Burgis has done his graduation and post-graduation from Anna University Chennai and got his PhD from NIT Calicut and he has over five years of experience in teaching as well. He also has a number of papers to his journals and publication lists along with a number of conferences and seminars that he has done. It is a great pleasure to have you sir to handle a session for our students. On behalf of SAP, I welcome you sir to the session. Over to you, over to you sir. Thank you. So, I hope I have just shared my PPT and it's visible to everyone. Okay, today, uh, I hope it's audible, right? Can I yes, hear? Sir, it's your, Can it I is, hear? Yes, sir, it's audible. Okay, thank you. So, the f here I would like to go on with the bevel gears and last time we have gone with uh, in fact, helical gears, and when we compare this one, the design is almost same in this. Oh, there are little differences here. Well, I'll just show you this one before that we'll go into theory, and this time I'm not uh, going deep into theory, rather, I just go in deep into the design work that is important for the students to learn better. Okay, well, these are the contents where I would like to just do that are the uh, bevel gear theory. Annotation. So this is like bevel gear theory, then the bevel gear design procedure, bevel gear demonstration problem. So these are three areas where I'm going to cover. And So uh, there are different types of bevel gear sets like straight bevel gear, spiral bevel gear, zero bevel gear, meter bevel gear, hypoid bevel gears. However, we are just uh, focusing only on the straight bevel gears since uh, uh, that 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 covers in our syllabus. So the result we will be going only with the straight bevel gears and the spiral bevel gears having uh, more importance when comparing the practical applications and zero bevel gear. Meter bevel gear has different applications in different areas. So we are not covering the design of these things in the class. So first come to the bevel gearing. So major thing when compared to the helical gearing, you can see the pitch circle itself. That is the surrounding circle it's, itself is different. In the case of a helical gear, you can see that it, that was a circular one. However, this has a con fresh from. So in fact, uh, this can be well clear here. That is when you extend this one towards the center, this becomes a cone. Also, you can see this is a cone. So there are two things like pinion and gear. And in fact, there is one more important factor is that we cannot combine a bevel gear with a spur gear or a helical gear or a worm gear. So, so bevel gearing should have the pinion and gear in both in the same shape or it should have the same module and the same pitch circle like this way. So it's a conical surface. You can see I can extend towards the apex. And in this case also, uh, this is actually the spiral case where I told that I will not be covering right now. That is uh, two, majorly two teeth pro of, uh, profiles are there, that is straight as well as the spiral one. And the other, all divisions are based on the axis which is kept, kept over this one. So, uh, 
this one is the one case uh, there are many models of the cases we can make over this one like uh, the bevel gear can be kept here so that when the axis is drawn it is perpendicular to the axis of the gear so that you're having a 90 degree in this case in fact uh, the pinion is kept somewhere offset to the center since it was the center and this is the center of this one the this is pinion is kept somewhere offset and when we come to uh, the case usually we'll be using the bevel gear to connect at 90 degrees that is uh, when we are to transfer the power from one form here to the other one at 90 degrees we will be just connecting the bevel gear however uh, that is not only the only case which we can deal with where the bevel gear can be changed into a different way that, that thus comes the different types of gears like meter gear bevel, the other type of gears are coming into scene here so you can see that it's not 90 degree in fact so it is uh, it's an obtuse angle greater than 90 degree also this is greater than 90 degree uh where it comes but when we draw the axis together what i'm saying is the surfaces are greater than 90 degree. when you draw the axis together when we compare the axis in fact it's an acute angle that is 60 degree axis are meeting here so i are meeting here at 60 degree then uh, here we can see that uh, when when we see the axis together it comes to 120 degree however outside peripheral looks like it's an acute degree but however the, when you take the axis it's not accurate in fact it's an obtuse one so what happens is that uh, they do it can rotate clockwise this rotates anti-clockwise that is uh, normally that's in the gears when one rotate in clockwise direction others other will be rotating in the anti-clockwise direction so that is the bevel gear rotation and usually major application they can we can see this one in the differential of the vehicle especially in the big vehicles or multi vehicles or even lower so we can see that there are bevel gears that are arranged the reason is uh, the major reason is that engine the power from the engine will be coming to one point and that should be distributed to two wheels that's well you can see here that is uh, the power the shaft comes to this one from the engine then it is distributed to two wheels so there is a 90 degree uh, division of the power or supply of the power is there. So as a result, uh, this is mostly used in differentially in case of this one. And, and there are greater technology, many technologies here haven't included much technology over there. However, uh, we can have some technologies seen here, bevel gear technology that is because of the axis of the rotation that the axis how the angle is there with this one so uh already i have just shown to you how the axis is uh between the 90 degree axis over this one and once you come to like uh, this is like uh, removing all the teeth over the surface removing all the teeth over the surface this comes the piece surface where when we see the piece surface we will exactly see what the uh, shape of that particular gear in the case of spur gear as well as the helical gear the shape is a cylinder however in the case of bevel gear it's a cone so there are two possibilities here like uh, we can extend this one this is from the piece circle line can be extended here also to here to create an apex also we can extend two lines in this direction as well like we can we can just do in this direction so uh, so like uh, in this direction this one you can see here that is along the pit, sur pit surface we are drawing a line here also and pit surface we are drawing a line here so this in fact uh, this comes to a point called the corn that is the apex and now the pitch angle is calculated as that is the angle between the horizontal surface and the inclined surface now again pitch angle varies depends upon the configuration how the this is kept as in fact this is the case only when that is in 90 degrees we are arranging the 90 degrees it's uh, this shows like uh, it will be drawing over this one and uh, there is an axis this is the axis along with we are drawing one so that is a case of uh, pitch angle here now so 90 degree there is a shaft and this decrease changes and the configuration changes to different name that is in here uh, happens the about the pitch angle now uh, this is somewhat the theory and where i had to go with the design so uh, i'm not going into better into far into theory so do we have any questions uh, just before we complete uh, get into the design so no one has posted any questions as of now okay uh, but there's a request that uh, 
you can use a little bit of malayalam as well you know in between that's what a request came in like that okay okay uh, so i need to have to use some malayalam so should i repeat this one or i mean like should i repeat the same theory in malayalam no sir in your uh, in session okay um, may, when may, you continue may. you can use malayalam okay okay we come into the design part here so design of bevel gear so uh, major major things were i think these things you can understand just by reading from this the, the malayalam conversation is not required at all in this case right so there are two uh, design procedure of the bevel gears bevel gears in the design procedure na pattiyana yan parayunnathu like uh, material selection that is the first case in any design if you take any case of this any designs the material selection is the first step and in in case of bevel gear bevel gear in the case less select suitable material if not given from the table 12.7 page 234 so ibada njan upayogikkunnathu mahadevan mahadevan the data book aanu karanam endu vachal adu koodal kutigalum koodal prefer cheyyunna oru book aanu short book aanu so i have used this one uh, for calculating this one and namak edu book upayogikkam ഇത് ഉപയോഗിക്കാം ഇറ്റ് ഡസൻ മാറ്റർ ഹവർ നമ്മൾ കംഫർട്ടബിൾ ആയിരിക്കണം അത് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നത് എന്നാൽ മാത്രമേ ഇത് ഈ സബ്ജക്ട്സ് ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ വി ഷുഡ് ബി വെൽ അവയർ അബൌട്ട് ദ ഡാറ്റാ ബുക്ക് ആൻഡ് വി ഷുഡ് ബി ഫ്ലോ ഇൻ ദ ഡാറ്റാ ബുക്ക് ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ഓൾ ദ വാല്യൂസ് അതർവൈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് ടു സോൾവ് ദ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഇൻ ദ ഡിസൈൻ സോ ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഡിസൈൻ സോ ഫസ്റ്റ് വി വിൽ ഗോ ടു ട്വൽവ് പോയിന്റ് സെവൻ പേജ് ടു തേർട്ടി ഫോർ ഞാൻ ഐ വിൽ ഡെമോൺസ്ട്രേറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വെൻ വി ഗെറ്റ് ഇൻ ടു ദ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ദൻ സെക്കൻഡ് ഇസ് ഐഡന്റിഫൈ വീക്കർ പാർട്ട് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ എപ്പോഴും ഞാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞ ക്ലാസ്സിലും പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു ലൈക്ക് വീക്കർ പാർട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ എപ്പോഴും ഡിസൈൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് കാരണം സ്ട്രോങ്ങർ പാർട്ട് ഡിസൈൻ ചെയ്താൽ വീക്കർ പാർട്ട് ഒരു പക്ഷെ ഫെയിലായി പോകാം അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെ സംഭവിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ആ ഡിസൈൻ ടോട്ടലി കൊളാപ്സ് ആവും സോ വി ഓൾവേസ് ഡിസൈൻ ഫോർ ദ വീക്കർ പാർട്ട് സോ ദ കണ്ടീഷൻസ് വി യൂസ് ഹിയർ ഈസ് ദ ഇഫ് ദ മെറ്റീരിയൽ യൂസ് ഫോർ ബോത്ത് പിന്നിയൻ ആൻഡ് ഗിയർ ഈസ് സെയിം ദിനിയൻ ഈസ് വീക്കർ ഒരേ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ആണ് യൂസ് അപ്പോൾ ക്വസ്റ്റിന്റെ ഉള്ളിൽ മെറ്റീരിയൽ തന്നിട്ടില്ല എങ്കിൽ വി അസ്യൂം ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ യൂസിംഗ് ദ സെയിം മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് വൺ ആ കേസിൽ പിനിയൻ ആണ് വീക്കർ ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ എടുക്കുക ഗിയറും പിനിയനിലും പിനിയൻ ഓൾവേസ് വീക്കർ ബിക്കോസ് അത് സ്മോൾ ഇൻ ഡയാമീറ്റർ തിക്നെസ്സിൽ കുറവായിരിക്കും അതുകൊണ്ട് ഒബിയസ്ലി ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ വീക്കർ വൺ ബട്ട് ഇൻ ഈഫ് ദ മെറ്റീരിയൽ യൂസ് ഫോർ ബോത്ത് പിനിയൻ ഗിയർ ആർ ഡിഫറെന്റ് സപ്പോസ് പിനിയൻ ഗിയർ ഈസ് യൂസ്ഡ് സ്റ്റീൽ ദ അതർ വൺ വി ആർ യൂസിംഗ് സം മൈൽഡ് കാസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഓർ സംതിങ് സോ വൺ ഇസ് സ്റ്റെയിൻലെസ് സ്റ്റീൽ ആൻഡ് കാസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് സംതിങ് അത് രണ്ട് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ എടുക്കുക അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ക്വസ്റ്റിന് തന്നിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ദൻ ദ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് ഫാക്ടർ നമ്മൾ സിഗ്മ ഡി മൾട്ടിപ്ലൈഡ് വൈ വൈ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ വൈ ഇസ് ദ ലൂയിസ് ഫാക്ടർ ഫോം ഫാക്ടർ അത് വെച്ച് മൾട്ടിപ്ലൈ ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ളത് എടുക്കും ജസ്റ്റ് വി ക്യാൻ ഡെമോൺസ്ട്രേറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ നൗ വൺസ് വി ഫൈൻഡ് ദ വീ ദ ഡിസൈൻ ഈസ് ടോട്ടലി ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ വീക്ക് അപ്പാർട്ട് സോ ഫസ്റ്റ് പാർട്ട് ഈസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഈസ് ഡിറ്റർമിനേഷൻ ഓഫ് വർ ഹൗ ടു ഡിസൈൻ ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ഷുഡ് ബി കൺസേർവ് ഫോർ ദ ഡിസൈൻ ദ സ്റ്റെപ് ടു Uh, step to module calculation that is module calculate you know i'm saying that module calculate we have to mesh it together to make some gear drawings or to transfer the power from one one form to other form or one from one axis to the other axis so at case le endha cheyana nu vachinal module calculation illa engil module arinjittilla engil namukku adutha gear choose cheyan kazhiyilla appo angane anengil mesh cheyathil orikkalum power transfer cheyan kazhiyilla so that we should find the module calculation design the second part and then we have to go for module calculation in case of gs so if the two cases are ivra varunna nachal one if diameter is not that is diameter namukku thannunde diameter nu parayumbo diameter of a gear endha eppolum parayumbo we always use the pitch circle diameter so pitch circle diameter ariyam engil we'll use the question uh, like uh, we'll be using this one m is equal to ft by this equation that you can see from 12.37 page 280 so it is ft evadana you can use this equation and uh, the, this everything we will see in the problems next comes the uh, diameter is unknown the case in the case diameter is known and diameter is i hope i have written second time so diameter is unknown diameter unknown in the case we have to 
data module equation this one so, uh, we come to this one uh, i just have a small to come to this point uh, but there, there is a confusion with the velocity in the last class so i have to make clear this one velocity that is velocity is given by pi dn by 60 2 pi r or circle circular circular section and 2 pi r we will take always 2 pi r which is the distance that is 2 pi r means pi d pi d multiplied by how many rotations ethra pressure rotate to change up a total distance is circular circumference of the total distance 2 pi r into n and times total distance will take. Upon number and distance velocity equal to distance by time. Upon number RPM and on rotations per minute. One minute in the total rotations at the round. Upon water rotation or other two pi r and pi d and the gun to the two. We have we are taken as two pi r. We are taken as two pi r pi d then multiplied by number of rotations. So pi d n divided by rpm ila thannadu kond adine endu enchal nammal second lot maatinu namaku meter per second lot aanu indinde pitch line velocity aanu nammal kandupidikkunnathu so adine idhe kaanum by 60 kaaranam minute ne nammal automatically seconds lot maatiyaanu so by 60 angane cheythu kaiyumbol namaku endu enchal meter per second lo kittu appo rendu conditions aanu ipo d ennu parayunnathu meter il thannittundengil namaku ee equation upayogichaa madhi alla d ennu parayunnathu Meter lalla thandu millimeter lana thandu ikkinna dhengi by thousand kodukka nam Pashya anna condition anna chal n anna varan na rps lai ikki ubi ikki Then v is equal to pi dn by 60 into 10,000 Idhi idhi nda case lana varan na yal nama kandha chal millimeter lom rpm ilum thandu ikkinna case lana nama equation ubi ikkinna So depend upon the question we have to use this one This confusion, this should not be a confusion for the more anymore so in the case of uh, once the diameter we have to use the module here then check for the sigma d in both cases that is static stress we have permissible stress we have permissible stress we have permissible stress we have to check the permissible stress we have to check the module calculate the initiation each and every time we will be using this one that is uh, using the equation sigma d equal to ft by equation that is, we check sigma d greater than permissible value. Permissible value is equal to sigma d. Greater than sigma d. We have to do this. We have to do this. We have to again recompute the module and restart the process. If sigma d calculated static stress is less than permissible stress, then we can continue. Then finally, calculate the phase width. Phase width is equal to the equation. Then come to the dynamic load calculation. That is the next step. Dynamic load calculation is gear is always running. It's not a static case, it's a dynamic case. So dynamic force should be done. Either way, what we have done is we have just depend on the Lewis equation, Lewis method to design. Now we go to the Buckingham methods. Buckingham methods in the chapter dynamic load calculate. So we start from static ending with the Buckingham's method. So calculate the dynamic load using the equation for the bevel case. Um, I am getting many questions, so uh, what I uh, suggest is like you can just ask at the end. Okay, I'm just go, going into the design. So finally, endurance limit calculation. Endurance limit calculation. Then we will etra na eru meaning video. Etra samay etne shesham ana. Namal kadu andar na chhe. Etra kaalengal kopiyo kya maybe for years or maybe in uh, in amount of uh, hours, days. Etra kaalu kopiyo kya na endurance limit. Then we will calculate it. Finally, wear load calculation. That is. Minimum weight, we have to do wear. So, wear means say, you know, rubbing, friction. So, friction wear, our teeth wear, then we have to change the gear. So, what is the safest load that we can apply so that the wear does not hook? So, that is FW. This is the equation. Now, we have to find out the value of K and find suitable material for gear. I am using uh, table 12.16, page 239. So, Okay, uh, somebody asking F endurance is uh, less than FD. So, F endurance is less than FD. We have to take the calculations for the, we have to repeat it. So, that, that, that will, uh, we just solve everything in the uh, problem where you will get better, better understanding. So, demonstrative problem that is a diameter unknown, pinion and gear. So, unknown diameters for pinion and gear. Okay. 
So can, can you hear me any problem with that? Hello? No sir, you can continue. Sir, yeah, I can I interrupt for a second here? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. I'd like, I request all the attendees to please post your questions in the Q&A option that is available on your screen. You can use the Q&A option to post your questions. We will be addressing your questions at the end of the first session. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's continue. Here, so uh, I told like when I said the design process, there will be many questions over there, but when we solve a problem, in fact, that every questions can be sorted out here. So this is a question like design of a pair of bevel gates to connect two shafts at 60 degree. Then we're going to 60 degree to connect to JN or two shafts in the axis of the middle of the 60 degree. That is not 90 degree. That is less than, uh, in fact, 90 degree. That is acute angle of the connect to But connect to JN, it will be uh, in uh, to, I have already seen, uh, shown in the theory how it does the connection. Then the power transmitted is power trans transmitted is 25 kilowatt. Power is equal to 25. Uh, so P is equal to 25 kilowatt RPM. N1 is equal to 900 RPM. So we have taken RPM of the pinion as N1. Then gear ratio, reduction ratio that is gear ratio is equal to 5 is to 1. Then there is an angle that is uh, 20 degree full depth involute angle. So this is, the, this is the pressure angle which is given as 20 degree full depth involute. Then pinion gear that is equal to 24 teeth and it's asking to design. So what is check the design for dynamic and wear consideration. We are a dynamic and natural FD as well as FW. Our conditions are going to check here. design. So uh, this is the initial stage what we are going, trying to do. This is always uh, the normal stage. Now, key parameters are That is N1, N2, Z2, Z1. These parameters are going to be gear design problems. So that is the parameter we have given it as I. So the relation here is I equal to N1 by N2 is equal to T2 by D1 equal to Z2 by Z1. Or I is equal to Z2 by Z1 because already we have uh, got one variable that is Z1 is already given here that is Z1 so we can find Z2 as I is known by is to 1 so the further calculations moves in this case uh, so step by step I'm just 5 is equal to that is I is equal to Z2 by Z1 where Z1 is already given and multiplied by you will get what is Z2 first part is this is this should know the number of and the n1 the, that can be the stage or you can calculate in the afterward state that doesn't matter that depends upon our our own thoughts so first some material properties so in this question you can see uh, no materials is specified here the power transmitter is other uh, no uh, material is specified as a result we can assume the material so since material is not specified let us assume that both pinion and gear are made of same material so same material in fact uh, uh, we will go to select uh, a particular material from the table and uh, yeah, I'll just show you like uh, we can go to the table which I have referred already there it's, uh, you can see table 12.7 page 234 which I have appended here. This one is good. Four steel about 0.3 percentage C heat treated. Usually, if not given, you can choose anyone. However, usually we are using a forged, met forged method for the gears to have a better strength. Then further, moving on this one. Once the material is selected, next we have to find out the weaker gear. So that is a pinion pinion or gear, which one is like. So usually we will be using the method called as uh, strength factor method that is sigma d multiplied by the Lewis factor y since both pinion and the gear of made of same material that the pinion is weaker this was the condition already we have already uh, deal, dealt with that is pinion is taken as the weaker one since the material is same that is sigma d1 y1 less than sigma d2 y2 that is the condition we are using that is this is sigma d1 y1 is the uh, like uh, that for the pinion the strength factor for the pinion and this for the gear. So in fact, we say this is having this is weak. 
now come to next part is that one next we our idea is to find out a virtual number of t so uh, as like uh, in the helical gear this there is also a format e gear we are making yeah okay uh formatic gear we are making here that is the power equations all will come in as follows so virtual number of teeth is it equal to z by cos delta in this one we have to calculate what is delta that is the first thing for calculating what is delta and the, we can see this equation here the z is equal to in 12.35 d page number 218 you can see is it equal to there is the equation is shown here you can use that equation then for the once we get the equation we have to find out the delta and how to find the delta on the same page it's just uh, uh not on the same page and the other same like 215 page number 215 12.29 you can see tan delta 1 tan delta 2 this equations that is equal to sin theta by and finally we are making sin theta by i plus cos theta so using this equation it is calculated i plus cos theta we are calculating what is delta 1 and delta 2 so in fact that are the angles of the pinion as well as the gear now using this we are finding what is virtual number of teeth for each pinion as well as gear that is you calculate the for pinion and gear so you can see that is virtual number of teeth for pinion is equal to we are uh, substituting delta 1 here delta 1 here okay so uh <laughs> comments are coming over there okay it's, uh, so 24 by cos 8.95 this will be equal to so equal to 7 by cos delta 1 that is equal to you'll get two values here once the virtual number of teeth is calculated so the first uh, first idea is to calculate the module we are moving towards calculating the module so this is the pre-calculation already done to make uh, make you better understand okay so first this is the module calculation you can see go to the data book you can see the equation here the module calculation ft is equal to using this one now however you can see there is a difference uh, this is 18 mt sigma d cv y z into square root of z1 square plus z2 in fact this equation is not given in the data book and i have shown how it is how it, uh, this equation is obtained so this is the equation it's available in the data book that is 12.37 page 280 now there are some diameter says unknown we have b equal to l by 3 l by l minus b equal to 3 by 2 and uh, ft all the equations uh, you can get and substitute and finally we will get the equation so hope that uh, we have to buy heart this equation that is m equal to square root of m because many parameters are included in this which is non parameters and maybe we cannot solve with, with this equation so that we are just moving to this equation by incorporating all the parameters inside this one and finally we will get the equation like just say and next one is we have to substitute the values in this one so uh, so we are calculating the power here that is uh, okay po power is equal to equation we are taking from 2 pi and t by 60 i hope this is available there uh, in the shaft section also p equal to 2 pi and t by 60 where 2 pi n n into t is given as mt so 25 t is equal to 25 into 10 power 3 2 pi into n is taken as 900 into mt by from there we will calculate i'm not calculating step by step however just showing you idea this is a demonstrative problem to just show you how to do that from this we have to calculate mt because the reason is that one a module has a variable called okay module ha module has a variable called mt you can see that module has a variable called mt so we are calculating this mt here you can see the md here mt is calculated then there is another factor with that we have to calculate is cv so assume that cv equal to 0 0.5 so if not given and if there is no way to find out this one we can assume it as 0 0.5 and then there is a form factor called y equal to pi y1 y equal to pi y1 this already we have seen the helix also so sorry that is uh, it's not mapped correctly so th there is an equation that is uh, uh, y equal to pi y1 which is uh, the equation is correct the mapping is not right so 12.24 b in the page number 240 
from there we can choose an equation pi into 0 0.134 and finally we will get what is the a value for y so we will get the value for y as 0 0.368 we can substitute this here then the other factors is sigma t z and z1 square plus z2 square now so since uh, all the values which uh, the others is given that is 220 sigma t is a static stress already given the permissible stress and uh, c like uh, we have calculated the cv as or uh, assume the cv as 0 0.5 and y is calculated then the number of teeth that is uh, number of teeth we are calculating for the uh, module because so we are just taking the pinion as the weaker one we are designing the pinion so we are taking the pinion and this is the sum of the squares of uh, both the pinion and the gear and finally we are finding the module so once the this is the first step we have calculated completed with this one now we have to standardize this module 3.43 in the table here we can see near to, near to 3.53 that is uh, we have taken the 4 that is uh, already 3.43 is a uh, then there, there will be a question that why can't you go for 3.5 doesn't matter we can go for that however we are just taking some module that is very near to the one which is a wall number which is easy, easy to manufacture as well so we'll take this one and finally we uh, come to this one as a module then finally we calculate the pitch circle diameter of the pinion since the module is kept here there is an equation here that's d equal to m into z from this equation you can calculate what is the circle diameter of the pinion that equal to m into z1 and once it got the circle of the gear you can there is an equation d2 by d1 i equal to d2 by d1 or d2 you can calculate this one i hope all uh, all may be aware of this type of uh, calculation sir can i interrupt yeah, yeah sure uh, um, there are a few questions in this session i guess okay. um, uh, um someone has asked why is cv taken as 0 0.5 why is it assumed as 0 0.5 and uh, yeah yeah, can I answer that? Can I answer? Yeah, please. Yeah, in fact, uh, CV, we have an equation there to find out the CV with the velocity. We have to take the velocity and finally we have to calculate the CV. However, just for our assumption, like uh, to make it quite simpler, we have taken the 0 0.5. That is, uh, like, or else you can calculate the velocity if the, the RPM is known. Then if the RPM is known, obviously we can calculate that one, CV from the equation from the data book. Okay, sir. And some Abhijit has asked, how is MT calculated? MT? Yeah, that is, uh, I, think, uh, I think there is a problem with uh, showing here. That is P equal to 2 pi NT by, so usually uh, just write some words. So I hope uh, I can see that P equal to So this is there is an there is a method to find out this one that is we can find out So here this torque usually will be taking us empty. In, the, in this case, we will be taking us empty where, uh, where we usually use this uh, NT as the normal equation as a wide applicable equation. So from this, we can find T since the power is already given. Power is already given in the question and N is also given for this one. So we can calculate the it is clear okay sir uh, a boy has asked can we select any material from the table i guess it's applicable in the beginning can we select any material from the table yeah i understood like uh, we can select but however the forged one gears will be better in the case and it's when it's heat treated it had to transfer large power so that should be hard enough as well as the forge method gives more power into that that's why we are taken doesn't matter we can 
we don't have to select any other any if you, if you select any other and finally we will be coming to the material the correct material after designing and we will find out the best material uh, uh, maybe the assumed material may not be correct at the end of the design so we'll come to the conclusion that that's we should take this material that's not a matter okay so one more question uh, how could we choose whether it's involute or sub teeth system if the details are not given so uh Involute system. In fact, uh, the uh, bevel gear we are following a uh, involute teeth. So they will be giving the involute teeth as per the syllabus. It's covered as the involute teeth, and uh, uh, I don't think that uh, they will be giving a. The profile is always involute. However, even though there there will be a difference in the pressure angle, it doesn't matter. We can use that data to calculate or design. I hope that that the student might have meant. Okay, sir. You may continue. We'll go on to the questions later on. Yeah. Okay. So once we calculate the module, the, this is the step which we are moving. The module is calculated, and finally from the pitch circle diameter is calculated. Now, so once the module calculation is ended, we have to go with the phase width. Obviously, there is a con distance that is uh, that that uh, I show you when it come into being and. The next one is uh, like uh, since the procedure is done, we have to calculate the phase width. So, how to calculate the phase width is we have to choose L by three. So, in the, this equation, you can go uh, go into the data book to page number two eighty twelve point three six. B is less than or equal to L by three. That is the phase width should be less than or equal to L by three. So, that is the condition. So, for us just to calculate this one, we have to take L is equal to half into So for for this we need the L. So L is equal to half into d1 square plus d2 square. So you can see here L is equal to half into d1 square square root of d1 square plus d2 square. Or there are other equations as well. Plus we have taken this equation here, and from this we have to calculate L. So L is equal to d1 plus d2. That is the piece circle diameter which already oh, sorry, which already we have uh, done here. That is uh, 100, 500. These are the piece circle diameters of the gear, and uh, you are just substituting that one to get the L. Once we get the L, B equal to L by three. So phase width also calculate. That's also almost a uh, factor to be found out under the movie. So once it's com completed, next part is to check for sigma d one. That is static or permissible stress. We have to check. We have to say, check the permissible stress. That is sigma d equal to F D. And this equation we can find out twelve point three seven page. To eighty, so that is uh, this is the equation here. And remember that the equation, remember that the equation is given as like this way. This is the equation given in this one. However, sigma d we have to extract the sigma d from this. We have to extract the sigma d. That is equal to F T divided by. Okay, we have to calculate that one. We have to take care of that one. Sigma d direct equations are not given. From this, we are calculating sigma d. Now next comes is that uh, we are checking for sigma d, and uh, where this the velocity we can calculate velocity. Or somebody ever asking why cv is taken as? It doesn't matter. You can go into your data book and take the cv by calculating the velocity since all the velocity is calculated here. Okay, so in this case, pi d one and one by sixty. So that that I made clear when I tell, tell the design. So how the parameters are given depend upon that one. We have to. Uh, calculate the v if it is rps uh, n is given in rps then we should not take uh, we should not consider the 60 if in rpm then we should consider the 60 and d1 is in millimeter then we should divide by 1000 if in meter we should not divide by 1000 so all the things are taken so final value is, is equal to that is uh, meter per second now now there again for gener generated teeth that is this is the uh, which we have assumed somewhere here that is 0.5 and we are just making sure whether this comes into the right way so cv equal to 6.1 by 6.1 plus v where and finally we get the as 0.5642 so if not you are not taking 0.5 nearby so almost the assumption is uh, similar if you are not taking also that will be corrected in the way when we check sigma d So when we are checking the sigma d to understand whether 
our design is safe until this one it should be under permissible stress if you have taken 1.53 or something then finally when you check sigma d sigma d will be always greater than the uh, calculator sigma d always will be greater than the permissible stress so that that can be avoided that we will show into while we go into so uh, then ft for ft we are calculator for the equations and i can get the equation from this Uh, let me show you. Uh, and I put it here, so you can go to. Uh, twelve point eight a. You can go to twelve point eight a page two not six to find out. the equation ft equal to 2 mt by t1 and we can calculate the ft once all is given we can go to find the sigma d which is already have shown this and uh, the values uh, substitute of the values in this one and we will get the values as 1134 megapascal which is less than 220 megapascal suppose in some questions if they are not given this sigma d where you can even find out from the data book in the first uh, design module 1 we have found out how we are finding the material static strength of this one so there is permissible strength you can find out this one so uh, once we find this uh, into being sigma d can be calculated 220 megapascal and is less than another design is safe so you can go for the this calculator well okay then comes to the phase width b so we have to make sure that b should be correct as we are drawn so that b equal to 85 mm so We fix it that L by three. We are used the equation L by three to find the B. Then comes to the dynamic tooth load. So last class I have been to solve up up to this. Uh, from this here, I just stop with here. This time I thought of I can include this one also. So dynamic tooth load is equal to this equation where you can find that equation from data book. Uh, F D is equal to. So you can see F D is equal to I have not marked here. So anyhow, we can see that F D is equal to this is the equation. You can use use it. So once the equation is used, now K three you have to take K three. The value is given under this in page two not seven under two twelve point one two. The K three value is given. So you have to substitute the K three here. Now for calculating this one. first we have to find out the error error 1 so uh, th that should be calculator for this one uh, and show you that the factor called c c has to be calculated and we have a small procedure here to calculate the factor c in this one so first we are taking 4 meter per second as a velocity already we have calculated pitch line velocity ago we got 4 point something so we are rounded it to 4 meter per second now corresponding error we are calculating from the table here so once comes to 4 meter per second the corresponding error is 0.0710 so this is like uh, this is uh, maximum allowable or permissible error in action so between gears this error is allowed where we can add the error in the case of bevel gear so you can see this uh, that is equal to 4 meter per second error is taken here from this table now second case is that we are taken the 20 degree 20 degree as the involute like a pressure angle that is equal to 20 degree we are taken and steel steel combination already we have chosen the material as steel steel combination now oh, we have to find out the 20 degree steel steel combination and error equal to 0.6 from this table again i think the table is not mapped here so here uh there there is an error that is 0.06 mm that is equal to 
from that you can find out what is the value of c now we have to calculate actually the value corresponding to 0 0.0710 not with this one so this is a zero how you will be thinking how you will get the 0 0.06 in fact like uh, we have taken the nearest value to 0 0.07 from this table that is table 12.12 page 236 we have taken the value and corresponding value under this c is given for alpha equal to 20 steel steel combination so we have we are using that one method here and uh, finally we are calculating the error so error is calculated by first ratio of errors that is 0 0.0710 divided by this is another error from this table 0 0.06 multiplied by the factor 686.7 for the error that is approximate to this one so you will get a value that is equal to 812.160 c value so once we get 812.60 we can substitute c value in this here as well here then all of the values we have already calculated and from this we can find out what is fd so this is actually this fd is equal to that is equal to dynamic tooth load what i am doing when when it's motion there is some dynamic force acting on that is this one then comes to the endurance to I calculate the endurance endurance is how long it, it will work without failure so in fact f endurance equal to sigma endurance b y m so this is uh, we can obtain from the data book here that is page number 290 equation number 12.39 that is equal to f endurance and this equation uh, just using this equation we are taking for alpha is equal to 20 degree steel steel combination of bh1 bh2 200 again uh, you have to go to another table you can see that 200 200 that is bh is equal to 200 200 taken as uh, this is this how we are taken is like we are just seen to 20 degree angle we are seen into 20 degree angle here so that is absolute that is a pressure angle and we have to see that endurance limit 480.5 these are the values uh, based on which we will take i'll show you one more time so you can see here uh, k we are taken this one bh b uh, steel steel combination having bh1 and one equal to bhn2 equal to 200 that is equal to k value and the, the total value of that one equal to 480 point 480.5 megapascal now f endurance we can find out by the, that is we are taking sigma endurance so that you might have seen from here For 80.5 that is for 200 200 we are taken 200 200 steel material that is bhn and on based on that one 20 in value the, this one uh, we are this is in fact we are taking this one as the material however this may not be the material it will not exist it will later it will change for this one we can see endurance limit is given as 480.5 and this is 20 degree and with this data and with the data of the k we are calculating the f endurance total f endurance and finally we are getting f endurance value as this one now again we are checking whether the f endurance value is greater than fd checking f endurance value is greater than fd so what happens that the material is safe against static tooth load so static load that f endurance should should be greater than fd or not then it will be in the safe condition so Oh, what is the here is like uh, you can see f endurance equal to 39.84 that is greater than fd dynamic load which is calculated that is equal to 24.87 so the material is safe against the static tooth load now to find the bhn bhn number that is the hardness number the gear can withstand any wear or erosion or some forces into that one we have to again find out this this one that is from the equation fw equal to this equation you can use and uh, have to note like there is a ratio factor q that will be soon we will be using so again we will be calculating the ratio factor since the ratio factor excuse me sir yeah sure sir. So, yeah, so we've got five more minutes we'll have yeah. to wind up in five minutes and yeah, i've yeah. got one or two questions related to the topic that you uh taught okay. right now um why is bhn taken as 200 and 200 that's a question someone has asked 
okay so uh, like I, I told you like this is this is an assumption which you have taken and this bhn may not be always correct and the final we are again choosing the bhn that we are correcting the bhn at the final stage initially we are taking assume that assume that the uh, same material and we are taken 200 200 as the bhn minimum to be used and that will be correct at the end of this uh, like uh, once we come to you can see that uh, finally we are ch changing the bhn to different values okay sir uh, you can finish your session yeah so so like that way we have to calculate the ratio factor and uh, finally we find that the wear and again we are checking this one this condition that is where force is greater than or equal to fd and you can see that finally uh, d, that is the equation here d1 b q by the equation is greater than 24.87 and finally we found out that is k is greater than or equal to 1.62 and uh, again this you, you like for for the value k greater than 1.6 you'll get the value that is equal to 1.746 so that that's the design of the spur gear uh, sorry uh, bevel gears and this is the case when i told you diameters is unknown and when the diameters is known similar the equations will be changing and you'll be taking so i hope uh, at the time i'm just dropping this one there was a diameter known and there is no difference here only only change i have to just show you is that we have to see the strength factor we have to determine this pinion weak pinion based on the strength strength factor you can see here we'll take the strength factor and which is lesser we we always take that one to decide we have to find the pinion based on uh, the strength factor so here you can see sigma d2 into y2 is less design so when we take this one this is the less one we assume this as the gear or we are taken this as the gear so we will now the design will be based on gear on the weaker gear not on the pinion so with that i am just uh, stopping the session so okay, sir, uh, just let's, let's just answer one or two more questions uh, abiran has a question from the last session he says while calculating ft the cs value is unknown where can we find it that's a question he has asked from the last session yeah cs value is, it's also we are just calculating from table i calculate the cs from cs where have mentioned the cs so in the last class you see not this class in okay, the last okay. class okay uh -huh. I have to go through the data book one more time to find out. That, that's on the bevel gears. So, is there any other question? By that time, I can just yeah, find. Yes, them. sir. Just yeah. Meanwhile, there is another question. Mahadevan and PSG. Is there any change in procedure of doing the design, or is there any, uh, or there be any change yeah. in weightage of yeah. awarding marks? That's a question. No. In fact, there is no change in no change awarding. In. But however, the reason is that. They have used a different parameters. So when we, when somebody is uh, teaching in with the other data book, and when you change the data book, the parameters they have taken will be different. So helix angle can be delta can be changed to other psi or something can be have seen in different text, different conventions they are used. That is only the way. There's a difference I have seen. And mark weighted will never come. The only thing that you have to just mention which data book you have been used. That. That's all. Okay. okay. And um, there is a question: uh, If it is given to take steel as a material, can we take any steel like cast steel, stainless steel, etc.? Yeah, sure. That you can take. That doesn't matter. But uh, the design, final stage, I told you the concept of the design is always we are making the gear that is less than the permissible stress. That is a major factor here. Okay. So whenever we will be checking the sigma d continuously, uh, even after every designing this one so what happens is that ya malati parayana nu sile endu endu analu ee ft namukku thannirikkana permissible stress inde thaale aayirikkana nammal calculate cheyidirikkana stress adana eppozhum check cheyidondirikkunu angane cheyna design eppozhum seri aayirikkum adana condition parangittullu okay sir so shall we mind yeah wind up yeah and uh, something called a cs uh, we have to find it out
or maybe in the next session so i can just yeah we we'll, yeah. yeah we will address it during the ne next session yeah okay so thank you sir for your valuable time uh, for taking your time out to you know uh, take a session for our, our students here i guess i hope it was a very informative session and uh, all the best to all the students and thank you very much sir on behalf of sap as well thank you sir thank you